All right, greetings everyone. Let's take a look at some more dopamine calculations. So the dopamine calculation you just saw is the, uh, that's the basis, that's the foundation. You need to know how to be able to do that one. But in the field, uh, that's not a very uh, field expedient method. So let's take a look at some other ways that are just as safe so long as you know how they are derived. That's the really important piece. You have to understand that dopamine comes in different concentrations, and if you have the wrong concentration, none of the different shortcuts that I'm getting ready to show you will work. All right, so I want to just refresh your memory. Remember that just a little while ago, you saw we did a 176-pound patient. We said 10 micrograms per kilo per minute for this patient, and we said that we would have to administer 30 drops per minute to this patient in order for us to accomplish that. All right, so let's take a look at another possibility. That was a pretty protracted way of doing it. Let's take a look at another way of doing it. So let's start back with, um, with what we started with here. And we said early on that there were 1,600 micrograms per 1 ml of dopamine. All right, so for every ml of D5W in the 400 and 250 uh, concentration, remember dopamine comes 400 milligrams, 250 cc's or 250 mls, we said that this translated to a concentration of 1600 micrograms per ml. All right, so now we're going to expand that a little bit and we're going to say, okay, how many micrograms of dopamine exist in every drop if we use a micro drop set? So let's take a look at that. So if in fact we convert the number of milliliters that we have here using our conversion of 1 ml to a 60 drop set, 60 drops for every 1 ml. So if we have 1600 micrograms in every ml and we multiply it by our conversion to get drops, this gets rid of our milliliters and this leaves us with a microgram per drop calculation. So we need to figure out 1600 divided by 60 and just to save you the time I'm gonna tell you it's 27 so this magic number you're gonna hear this you're gonna see all your colleagues in the field doing this they're gonna say you take the total amount of drug that you have to give the patient per minute and you divide simply by 27 and forget all that other stuff they taught you at the Academy they don't know what they're talking about I need you to understand that in order for the 27 to work it must be that your dopamine concentration is 400 milligrams and 250 mLs of D5. If it's not that, this will not, absolutely positively will not work, and you will commit a drug maladministration error. So we don't want to do that. All right, so 27 micrograms per, kilo, uh, per drop is an important number because now look, if we remember from before, we said a 176-pound patient was 80 kilograms, and we said if we administered 10 mics per kilo to this patient, then we would have to administer 800 micrograms per minute. All right, so now instead of doing all that other fancy work that we did before, now what we can do is say, okay, if we know we need to give 800 micrograms per minute, and we also know that there are 27 micrograms for every drop, now look what we can do. We can get rid of our micrograms and we'll end up with drops per minute. Wow, that's a big shortcut for us. That saves us a lot of math and a lot of trouble. And you can do this on your calculator, but what I will tell you this ends up is just under 30 drops. It's like 29.8 or 0.6 or something like that. And if you recall from the previous example, 30 drops per minute is exactly the same number as we ended up when we did it that long way using all of that mathematical computation. So here's the trick. The trick is find the total number of micrograms per minute that you need to administer to the patient. Take that number and divide it by 27 micrograms. This will yield the number of drops per minute that you must administer to the patient. All right, so this is kind of the formula that you have to remember. All right, the number of micrograms, total number of micrograms that you're going to administer per minute, and then you're going to divide that number by 27. But remember that 27 is really 
27 micrograms for every one drop. All right, that's a really, really, really important thing to remember. You've got to be able to understand where that 27 comes from. And the number that you end up with is the number of drops that you have to administer per minute. All right, so this is an easy way of figuring dopamine drip rate using a different mechanism. All right, so now we're going to look at another shortcut. And this shortcut is going to be uh, this shortcut is going to be probably your favorite, and it's certainly my favorite. Um, but I want you to understand that there's always room for error with all this stuff. So if you do two ways of calculating the drip rate for dopamine, you'll be in pretty good shape. So always a good idea to do that. Always a good idea to bounce it off your buddy. Always a good idea to use a calculator. If you don't know, call somebody and ask. All right, so here's the next rule that I'm going to give you. I'm going to tell you that this rule applies to a 5 microgram per kilogram per minute dose. So it's important for you to know this baseline tidbit. All right, here's, the, here's what we're going to look at. 176 pound man or person. We were told that we needed to administer 10 micrograms per kilogram per minute. So this is going to play an important role. So don't forget this piece here. All right, so here is the trick. The trick is do not convert this patient's weight to kilograms. Leave it in pounds. The first thing you're going to do is drop off the last number. So the last digit is a better way of saying it. So you're going to take this 176 pounds and you're going to drop off the last digit. This is the last digit. So you're going to end up with 17. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to subtract 2. Always. You don't subtract 6 for some or 7 for some or 1 for others. It's always subtract 2. Always. Now you end up with this number, and that number is 15. And what does that represent? That represents the number of drops per minute that you need to administer to this 176-pound patient in order to accomplish a 5 microgram per kilo per minute dose. So remember earlier we said we want to give 10 micrograms per kilo per minute. Well, in fact, in order to get from 5 to 10, you have to multiply it by 2. So let's do the same thing. 15 drops times 2. This is drops per minute times 2 is going to equal 30 drops per minute. Wow. So take a look here. We ended up with the same thing, 30 drops per minute. If we do it with the 27, divide by 27, we ended up with 30 drops per minute. If we did it the longhand way, that was the first example that I showed you. And lo and behold, we actually end up with a 30 drop per minute rate. Also, if we do it with the shortcut, which you leave it in pounds. Pounds are good here. Do not change this. Drop off the last digit so you get rid of this guy. Subtract the number 2. The number that you end up with is 15. In this case, this stands for the drops per minute to accomplish or to achieve 5 micrograms per kilo per minute. In order to get our 10 mics, we have to multiply it by 2. That gives us 30 drops per minute. All right, so this will work for anything. Play with these different uh, tools and these techniques and uh, commit them to memory. But be sure, if you're going to use a shortcut, that you understand how the math works. The math for this is not uh, so easy, so I'm not going to show you that. But just understand if you're using two ways of verifying your work, you should be in good shape anyway. All right, hope this helped, and uh, bring any questions you may have to class. We'll go over them.